Today's video is brought to you by Curiosity Stream. More on them in just a bit. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another brand new episode of The Casual Criminalist. As always, hello there. I'm your host, Simon Wilhamis here. One of my writers in this case, Matt, has written me a script. Thank you, Matt. This is Tom and Jackie Hawk's Tragedy at Sea. I don't know if this... No relation to Tony Hawk. <laughs> Tony Hawk's? Tony Hawk's. The skating dude who, um... Made all those games that I spent way too much time playing back in the day. This is irrelevant. This isn't what this video or this podcast is about. Um, the format of the show, if you're new, is I've never read this before. We're going to read it and explore together. It's, uh, it's, like, well, let's, let's just get into it. Tom Hawks was born and raised in California. A military veteran, former probation officer and bodybuilder, he married his first wife, though it ended in divorce. This guy sounds like a dude you don't want to mess with. He's a veteran, a probation officer, and a bodybuilder. This is the sort of dude I'd be like, oh, no, he could... I mean, like, 90% of people could beat me up because... <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I don't... I, this isn't what I do. <laughs> but this guy would be like, uh oh. <laughs> Tom did get two wonderful children out of it, though. Ryan and Matt, who he raised on his own. One day in 1986, Tom was at a local chili competition when he met Jackie. They hit it off instantly, starting a romance which eventually blossomed into marriage in 1989. This was both their second marriages, Jackie having lost her first husband in an accident a few years prior. They loved each other unconditionally, and together they raised Ryan and Matt to the best of their abilities. Jackie was sadly unable to have children of her own after an accident when she was 22, so when given the chance to raise Tom's children as her own, she dumped right into it, loving them as her own. It got to the point that even though the boy's mother was still alive, they did start calling Jackie mom. Eventually, the boys grew up and left the house to live on their own. The nest was empty, and Tom and Jackie could feel the emptiness around them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in this position now. It's like, I, I, my wife and I have a kid who's uh, two and a half. That's our oldest. And then we got a younger one. And I'm like, man. Yeah, and I'm listen I sometimes listen to podcasts or, you know, you read stories like this. And it's like, ah, uh, you know, the kids leave home and the adults are so sad. And I'm like, you're so sad. Oh, my God. I would sleep so long. And I guess, like, as the kids get older, it's like, it, you know. <laughs> There's less like, oh, why do you have so many crises in the night? Why? And then you're like, oh, it becomes sad when they leave. But I'm just like, oh, my God, I would sleep so hard for so long. <laughs> oh, the empty nest. However, the loving couple had planned for this. They weren't wealthy by any means, but they were smart and they managed to save money for years just for this moment. So in 2002, after their sons moved out, both of them retired, sold their house, and with the money they saved up along with the proceeds from the house sale, they poached, purchased a yacht that they christened the well-deserved, an appropriate name if there ever was one. That is awesome. <laughs> like early retirement, buying a yacht, going out there and cruising on the oceans. You better be goddamn sure that that's what you want to do though, because otherwise, you know, you've bought this boat and unlike a house, I don't really know anything about yachts, but I imagine they don't hold their value in quite the same way that property does. Can you imagine getting on that boat and being like, man, I didn't really realize it, but I don't like boating. <laughs> like after a year, boating is boring. I wish I had my house and I can't even buy a house because the boat is depreciated. Simon, why are you shitting all over these people's dreams? This sounds awesome. You're just jealous. As soon as they bought the boat, Tom and Jackie got to work. It wasn't a huge yacht by any means. It was fairly small and it had its wear and tear from years of previous use. Tom and Jackie are very financially prudent because I was just like, yeah, they're buying some new yacht called Well Deserved. They're like running that motor, like running that um, depreciation. I said, no, no, they bought it used after selling their home and saving up. This is, uh, you know, I like, this is how I like to do things. I still, I don't buy new cars. <laughs> That's for crazy people. Why would I want a new car? However, the Hawks were persistent in their efforts to make this little dream of theirs as pristine as possible. All their hard work paid off, and by the summer of that year, the well-deserved was in beautiful condition and ready to set sail. Tom and Jackie had already moved all of their belongings on board, and from that moment onwards, they lived happily upon their boat. For two years, they sailed up and down the California and Mexican coastline, living their best life. Yep. Not jealous at all. Not jealous at all of this. Just cruising up and down the California coastline on a yacht. I'm sure like drinking Corona with a little lime stuck in the top at three o'clock in the afternoon. Ah, <laughs> oh, well, I'm here on a Wednesday morning. Making... I mean, look, I'm not complaining. I love doing this. But it's like, it's so different from what I'm doing right now that you're like, oh man. 
Then, in 2004, happiness struck once again out of the blue. Tom and Jackie's son Matt announced that his wife was expecting. The loving couple were finally going to be grandparents, and they were over the moon. With this news, Tom and Jackie made the decision to sell their yacht and use the proceeds to purchase a house on land in order to be close to their family and help look after their new grandbaby. So, in November of 2004, the Hawks put an ad in the local fishing magazine advertising the well deserved for sale for about half a million dollars. It's gotta be a pretty nice boat, then, doesn't it? Half a milli? Wow. And soon enough, someone reached out to buy. Oh god, the way that's the way that Matt has written this, and soon enough, dot dot dot, someone reached out to buy. I was like, this guy's gonna murder them or something. It's like, why? I was vicariously living through their life. Having a corona on a yacht. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> living my best life. I want a boat. I don't want a boat. One thing that really put me off boats is the quote, um, the best the two best days of owning a boat are the day you buy it and the day you sell it. And I'm like, yeah, I get that. Because, like, owning sh is really, like, a lot of work. Like, I have a little holiday house. And it's like, I love my little holiday house. And I, like, I want to go there most weekends. And just, it's in the middle of the forest. It's so nice. There's a little river. And it's like, ah. Oh. But there's always something. There's always, like, oh, no, there's a wasp's nest in the, there's a, um, like, a hot tub. And then it was like, I was, like, just sitting out on the deck where this hot tub is. And uh, it was like closed for the summer, you know, just had the lid on. And all these waspies were coming out of it. And I'm like, oh God, there's a wasp's nest in there, isn't there? Brilliant. So that's something to deal with. And then it's like got this well and there's a pump, you know, that brings up the water from the well to put it through the like the, the water system. And the pump's got some problems. So I got to get someone in to replace that. It's like all of these little things. And this is a house, like a small, not complicated house. But apparently with boats, it's just endless maintenance. And I, this is the thing. Like, if I'm on my boat, I just want to be sipping a Corona with a little lime in the top. I don't want to be, like, washing my boat, scrubbing barnacles off my boat, dealing with engine problems. You know, all of this boat shit that I imagine exists. Sorry. I, why? <laughs> why can't you just enjoy this, Simon? Why do you have to be like this? From every article, every report, every video that I could find, one thing always remained true. Tom and Jackie Hawks were phenomenal people. They loved each other more than anything. They adored their two sons, and they were looking forward to being grandparents. From the pictures of the two of them from the many home videos the two had made, it was clear that they were so full of life, even as they got older. It's because of this that what came to pass next breaks my heart every time I hear it. Ah. Oh. Matt, why? Why can't we just end the story there? These two people, they enjoy their early retirement and then they raise their... Why? This is what I want from my life. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to get murdered. The Disappearance As soon as the Hawks received word of a potential buyer, they were excited. Calling both of their sons, they told them of the upcoming sale and that they'd be in touch soon after to set things up for the move to a new home. Matt and Ram were looking forward to it as well and waited patiently for their parents to call, except that call never came. Two old days went by and not a peep from either Tom or Jackie. The boys had gotten worried at that point and attempted to contact their mother and father to no avail. Neither Tom nor Jackie answered their calls, which was very much out of character. Their children were their worlds, so for them not to call or answer when they called was something was definitely wrong. Upon hearing the news of the suspicious silence, Tom's brother, Jim Hawks, who was a retired police chief in his own right, dropped everything and set out for Newport Beach, California, in order to check on his brother and sister-in-law, arriving at the docks that I know Newport Beach, California. Is that where the, uh, the OC was set, right? Newport Beach. I went there. I went to uh, Los Angeles a few years ago and I went to Newport Beach because I was like, that's where the OC comes. It's like, it's nice. It was like 30 something degrees that day. So it's unbelievable. Uh, or like, I don't know what that is in American. Uh, it was really hot. And I'm just like sweltering in the sun. I was like, oh yeah, okay. This is nice. It wasn't like as nice as you see in the TV shows because that's a TV show and it's not representative of reality. But it was like, wow, fun aside, Simon. Great stuff. Let's carry on. Arriving at the docks, Jim and a friend of his exited the vehicle and walked right up to the well deserved. As soon as they approached the boat, they determined that Jackie and Tom were not on board. They also noticed several things out of place. The tarps meant to be over the control panels were thrown off and not put back. Dirty towels were hanging out of portals and there were lines left hanging over the side of the boat. The Hawks were very clean, meticulous people that have never left their boat in such a state. Believing that the boat must be under new ownership after all, Jim took out his business card and wrote a note for the owners, stating that he was the brother of the previous owner, but no one could get a hold of him or his wife, so please call if they had any information. Jim and his friends then drive off, but before they can even get out of the area, 
Jim's phone rings. This was Jennifer de Leon, and she said that her husband, Skyler, had in fact purchased the yacht, but there were some controls they had no idea how to work, and they couldn't find the manual, so they needed to get in touch with Tom and Jackie about it. The Hawk said also apparently left some personal items on the boat, and they wanted to return them to the couple. Ah, uh, so I feel like they bought this boat from someone else, like someone's nicked this boat somehow and run off with the money and murdered Tom and Jackie sadly. Upon being asked when was the last time they saw Tom and Jackie, Jennifer told Jim that after the sale was finalized, Tom and Jackie had simply gotten in their car and sped off. Apparently, in the short time the couples had talked, Tom had noticed that the two of them had plans on purchasing a house down in Mexico in a town that borders Arizona since their son lives there. After the call ended, Jim was stumped as what to do next, but then he had an idea. Tom and Jackie had hired a woman named Patricia to manage most of their financial affairs after they began living on the well-deserved, so he figured she must know something. Yeah, this is risky, when someone controls so much of your financial affairs, like, and just has all of your power of attorney or whatever to deal with all that stuff. That is gonna. I always feel that's that's open to abuse. That's a risky, um, that's a risky hire. And just given that this is a true crime thing, and that there's a half million dollar boat in play, and that these people have probably been killed, uh, I'm already like, who is this woman? And let's look into her quickly and immediately. I, I mean, <laughs> jumping to conclusions about she could just be a really nice person who's just looking after these people's affairs. How dare you! Jim called and explained to Patricia what the situation was. He then asked her if she had heard from Tom or Jackie recently, recently, to which she said no. He then asked if there was any activity in their accounts, if perhaps a large sum of money had been deposited from the sale of their yacht. Checking the accounts, Patricia informed Jim that no money had been put into the Hawks' account, let alone $500,000. It was at this point more worried than ever that Jim Hawks called the police and reported Tom and Jackie Hawks as missing. I think my theory is sound so far, isn't it? Someone's nicked that boat. Someone killed them, took the boat, sold it. And uh, I don't know if the new owners, I think the new owners might not have anything to do with this. I think they've legitimately paid for the boat. And because otherwise they wouldn't be like, oh, yeah, yeah. Can you get in touch with them? Because I don't know how to work like this, uh, this control paddle. <laughs> I don't think that's something you'd do. Go, go, Skylar de Leon. Police officers arrived at the docks to search the boat and were met with the sight of what they believed to be a bloody handprint. More officers arrived to aid in the search, but on further analysis, it was confirmed to only be discoloration due to rusting. Almost as soon as the police got involved, they began looking at the folks who purchased the well-deserved. They brought Jennifer's husband, Skylar de Leon, in for discussion over the purchasing of the boat, to which he said that he purchased it with the money Skylar had saved up from his acting career as a child. Yep, that's right, Skylar de Leon was a child actor back in the day. His claim to fame? as a child extra on the 55th episode of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Um, I've been an extra in TV shows and mo in movies, and it doesn't pay that well. I did it, well, I don't know, God, over a decade ago now, and I think I got paid like a few hundred quid for a day. So let's just, let's, let's just say that it doesn't, you know, there's none, none of that money is left. <laughs> The title of this chapter makes sense now, doesn't it? Oh, go, go, Skylar. Go, go, Power Rangers! I couldn't watch Power Rangers as a kid. My parents said it was too violent. And I remember once I got home from school and there was a VHS tape on the TV, like on top of the TV in the kitchen, wrapped up in cellophane. And it was like a Power Rangers movie. And I was like, whoa, my parents bought a Power Rangers movie? So I rip it out of cellophane. I put it in the TV. It was one of those weird TVs, you know. Do you remember when the TV, sometimes the, the VCR would be built into the TV? I put it in there and I start watching this Power Rangers movie. And I, I definitely wasn't home alone because I was too young. But my parents just, I don't know, they were in the other room or in the garden or whatever. And so I'm watching this Power Rangers movie and then my parents are upset because A, I watched a Power Rangers movie and B, the Power Rangers movie was for my cousin who was younger than me but still allowed to watch Power Rangers. So that was a double disappointment. And honestly, it wasn't even that good. This couldn't be confirmed as the name Skylar de Leon couldn't be found in the credits of the episode, nor could his birth name of John Julius Jacobson Jr. Dude, if you've if your name is John John Julius Jacobson, don't change your name. That's sick. Just call yourself Triple J. Come on. Or even quadruple J, because you're junior. Skylar provided signed paperwork of the transaction from Jackie Hawks finalizing the sale of the well-deserved to himself and his wife. He told them that on the day he and Jennifer were with their young baby daughter, along with a notary named Kathleen Harris and a friend of his named Alonso Machain. He said they all hit it off, and Tom took everyone out on the boat for a sea trial, which is basically a ride around in the open ocean to show the new owners how the boat runs. Skylar told Tom he loved the boat once they were on land, and that's where all the paperwork was finalized, money was exchanged, and the Hawks 
just took off. I get the feeling these aren't the Hawks. Maybe these are just some imposters and the notary's not a real notary. Because that's the thing. If you're like buying a house, right? Or buying a big piece of property like this. And I don't know, I've bought houses and you sit down in like the lawyer's office or whatever. Or like the office of the person you're buying it off, like the, the realtor or whoever. And then it's like, yes, and here is our notary. And you're like, okay. And they're like signing this big book and they're signing all these documents. They got a stamp. But it's like, how hard would that be to fake? Just have someone wearing a suit with a fake stamp and a junk junk. And then the next thing you know, you're like transferring money. And it's like, oh, there's, there's, there's so many ways to get conned. <laughs> Now, the police were still quite suspicious over this whole situation. The boat, co the boat cost half a million dollars. Skylar's acting credits couldn't be proven, no matter how much he claimed they were true. And even if they were, he and Jennifer were living in a converted garage with Jennifer's family, Jennifer's hairdressing job being their only steady stream of income. These people can't afford a half million dollar boat. I'm sorry. Like, you can't just be like, oh, I was an extra in Power Rangers. It's like, mate, that probably paid about 50p. What are you talking about? My first ever on screen thing, I must have been like, I don't know. 12, 13 years old, and it paid 25 pounds. <laughs> it's not boat money, is it? It just didn't seem feasible for the couple to purchase something as grand as a half million dollar yacht. The officers pressed him further, and that's when Skyler admitted that he not bought the boat with money from his acting career, instead he'd been involved in a large drug smuggling ring that he'd used to purchase the yacht as a way and he'd used the purchase of the yacht as a way to launder money. Mate, what are you doing? <laughs> it seems like you're you're admitting to fairly big crimes. You're part of a drug smuggling ring and you're buying a yacht to launder money? Mate, that is uh, like drug smuggling, bro. It's going to get send you to prison for a long ass time. This is America. Now, this is a big deal. Laundering money is a felony, especially when it's connected to illegal activity. Well, doesn't that state the obvious? Why would you be laundering money if it's not connected to illegal activity? Then there's no need to launder it, is there? <laughs> it's like, no, I just I just launder my income because I just, I don't know, I just want to feel straight G. <laughs> However, the cops actually let Skylar go free after admitting this. Now, Simon, before you have an aneurysm, there was a good reason for it. They wanted to keep tabs on Skylar to hopefully get the whereabouts of Tom and Jackie. Yeah, if if that was, if you're in that situation, the cops admit you, and it's like, yeah, no, I wasn't due to acting, officer. Uh, I was actually involved in a drug smuggling ring, and I bought the yacht to murder, uh, to murder, <laughs> to launder all of the money from my extremely profitable drug smuggling. And they're like, all right, mate, well, we're going to look into that. For now, uh, you can go. <laughs> no bonds, no nothing. No, just like, you can go. And I feel like drug smugglers probably have connections. You know, it's like they're smuggling those drugs from somewhere, probably, I don't know, south of the border. And if I know anything about, like, movies, they always go south of the border and then to, like, some non-extradition country. I mean, like, if they've let you go, mate, they are watching you like a hawk, pun intended. If you do anything suspicious, you're an idiot. Now, just before we continue with today's episode, let me tell you about its fantastic sponsor, Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream is a subscription streaming service that offers thousands of non-fiction movies and TV shows from some of the world's best filmmakers, including exclusive originals. They got millions of subscribers, new shows every week, history, science, tech, military history, and more. And I'll specifically mention in the more there, look, you're watching a show about true crime. They have a whole section on crime and true crime and uh it's fantastic i'll tell you about a recommendation from that in just a minute look curiosity stream is the netflix for nerd the hulu for history buffs the disney plus for the scientist in us i'd like one of those rhyming things for true crime as well that'd be cool but that's not in the copy and i'm not smart enough to think of one off off the top of my head also it's extremely affordable it's less than 20 dollars a year and no i didn't misspeak it's 20 dollars a year i swear i play like the equivalent of 20 dollars a month or something for netflix and granted, I have, like, the fancy one, but it's still, like, that's per month! This is per year! Look, what I would recommend today, Scotland's Murder Mysteries, that's in their true crime content. Yes, all the murder mysteries from one part of the world, and there are a lot of them. So I didn't think that many people lived in Scotland, but they've been up to crimes. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. They look at tons of primary evidence and then talk to a bunch of experts about it, and then have actors do recreations as best they guessed it went down. It's great stuff, and, uh, yeah, thoroughly recommend that. I'll remind you of the name again is Scotland's Murder Mysteries on Curiosity Stream. Uh, also, Curiosity Stream is available on a whole bunch of platforms. They've got a giant list here. But look, if you've got a you know a device with a screen that was made in the you know last few years, it's going to work on there. All you need to do is go to curiositystream.com/criminalist for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and non-fiction series. And for you guys, use the promo code criminalist and you'll get 25% off, which comes out to only 14.99 a year. So not only is it's not even 20 dollars. 
It's less than $15, which is just $1.25 a month. Again, curiositystream.com slash criminalist, 25% off, making it $14.99 for the entire year. And now, back to today's video. Suspicions Three weeks after Skylar was let go, the police were flabbergasted to find out that Skylar and Jennifer had attempted to gain access to the Hawks' bank accounts. They were even more flawed when it was revealed that for some reason the DeLeons had been given power of attorney over the Hawks' assets. Uh, oh my god, no. <laughs> this is, they, they just bought a boat off these people, and those people are missing. Guys, you are terrible criminals. What are you trying to do? You are going to go to prison so hard. Red flags went up instantly, right? Well, yes, but there was a speed bump. You see, Skylar and Jennifer had the proper paperwork for said transfer of power, with Jackie and the notary signing it, making it official and legitimate. Look into that, because that is mad suspicious. That is, like, all I was saying about that notary stuff, this is a crooked notary. How, I mean, come on. They continued to say the reason they went into their accounts was to help Tom and Jackie facilitate the purchase of the aforementioned property in Mexico. But the police weren't buying it. Good. <laughs> they were still locked in on this couple, thinking something that terrible must have happened to Tom and Jackie. Looking into both of them, Jennifer de Leon had a clean record, but the cops were intrigued to find out that Skylar actually had criminal charges and had served time. Shocking. You see, Skylar had been involved in an armed robbery back in 2002 for which he was still on parole. He also admitted to you that he was a money laundering drug smuggler. It also didn't help his case when he was 20, he had enlisted in the military but deserted after only two weeks, getting a less than honorable discharge. Yeah, that's what happens when you desert. Uh, it was while in prison that he had befriended Alonso Machain, who had been working as a guard at the prison at the time. It also didn't help that when questioned, all four people who were reportedly there when the transaction went down all had similar accounts except for one detail. They all said that the Hawks were acting differently, with Skylar saying that Tom was acting nervous and paranoid, while the notary claimed they were just fine. Even with their suspicions, though, they couldn't do much and they hit a proverbial dead end, so in a desperate effort, they turned to the media, with a bulletin going out nationwide with a picture of the Hawks' car and their names asking for any information available. The police are doing some solid work here and really on top of it and I can't, I don't want to like, I feel like even when the police are doing good work it's like well yeah, this guy was like in military, he was a parole officer, his brother was like the chief of police. I don't want to say that they're more thorough when it's fellow cops or cops family but I, I you know Let's come on. Revelations across the border. Within two days of the bulletin airing, the police were contacted by an old couple in Mexico. They claimed that the Hawks' vehicle was right across the street, parked on the side of the road. American and Mexican authorities rushed to the scene, and indeed it was Tom and Jackie's vehicle. Going up to the house, they knocked on the door, hoping for it to be the Hawks. But of course, it wasn't, because the world we live in is actually a cruel place. The Mexican man who answered the door was confused as to what all the hullabaloo was about and he asked who the car belonged to. He said his friend. Then then asked him if his friend was Tom or Jackie Hawks. He said no, it was Skylar de Leon. At that point, oh my god, Skylar de Leon, if you're still walking through, get get the handcuffs on Skylar de Leon and throw him in a prison. At this point, the police kicked into overdrive and using the taped confession, they arrested Skylar on money laundering charges and searched his home. The Leon's is, is also a drug smuggler. He admitted to this. It's crazy. The De Leon's house was a gold mine. Pieces of Tom and Jackie's property, such as laptops and video cameras, things they would not have left without, were all found in the De Leon house. You guys are sh criminals. What are you up to? Skylar maintained he was innocent throughout all of this, and Jennifer stood by him. Taking, talking to the media to preach his innocence to the country. The police weren't having it, though. <laughs> yeah, because the police rely on something called f***ing evidence. Not you being like, no, nah, mate, it wasn't me. How do you explain all this stuff? I don't know. <laughs> I, they, they gave it to me. They gave me the power of attorney, their boat, their money, and uh, also their laptops and video cameras and... Jesus Christ, probably their clothes, you insane person. Uh, police weren't having it though, and with Skylar giving them nothing to work with, they brought the notary and Alonso back in for questioning. They turned the pressure on, and while she initially stuck to her story, Kathleen finally came clean. She'd never even met Tom or Jackie before in her life, and she'd never seen them sign any sort of documents. Kathleen had been paid extra money by Skylar Dillian to backdate the documents to November the 15th, 2004, and apply her notary seal to them after the fact, though she had no idea what happened to them during the transaction if you're a notary and you're doing that that's gonna have pretty don't aren't you've got to be held to a higher standard right because the whole point of being a notary is that you don't do that 
Are you going to... I feel like that's probably, like, not just have your notary license revoked, but that's definitely a crime. And I feel like that's probably, like, prison crime. Because that's a major sh Next was Alonso's turn. Initially, like Kathleen, he too stuck to the same story. However, as soon as he was confronted by the truth that Kathleen had come clean, he shut down entirely. Their backs against the wall and desperate to find some breaks in this case, the police assured Alonso that he would get a reduced sentence as long as he cooperated with them, to which Alonso finally agreed. Yeah, Alonso, I don't know what his role in this exactly is yet, but if I was in his position, I'd be rolling over on everyone so hard because they seem to be committing more major crimes and i have information about that and i don't want to go to jail alonso told the police about his friendship with skylar dating all the way back to the prison where he had been a guard while skylar was locked up somehow they managed to stay close after skylar had gotten out of prison and come november of 2004 skylar took alonso aside and confided him in in him a great secret what was this tip-top secret skylar was an international master assassin <laughs> Of course he was. Why do you keep admitting to greater crimes? It's like, no, 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 okay, so it was like theft, and then it was drug smuggling, and money laundering, and now it's murder for hire. What are you doing? Yeah, sure, Skylar, you're an international assassin, and I am Harriet Tubman. Regardless, he confided this great secret to Alonso, and told him that he'd been given a contract to kill two very bad people, who just happened to be Tom and Jackie Hawks. They're not bad people. We spent the whole first chapter of this episode talking about how they were really nice people whose life I, want, whose life I wanted just sipping Corona on a boat. He told Alonso that he needed help ridding the world of these bad people, and if Alonso helped him out, he'd pay Alonso a million dollars. Yes, the man living in his in-law's garage had a milli lying around to give to this poor schmuck, and Alonso, being the big brain mega genius he is, agreed to, <laughs> obvious sarcasm, <laughs> agreed to help his best buddy out in murdering these very bad people. And that brings us to the events of the fateful day down at the docks. Undeserved on the well deserved. Skyner and Alonso met with the Hawks that day down at the docks, but they didn't do it alone. Seeing that Tom Hawks was a very large and imposing man, Skyler made a call to a friend of his by the name of John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Um, is that the same name as actual JFK? Is his name Fitzgerald? I feel it was. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> No, Skylar wasn't a DND star necromancer who summoned the 35th president of the United States beyond from, from beyond the veil to have a chat with Tom. No, this JFK was a large African American man who had ties to several gangs in the area that Skylar had also met in prison. If that sounds too stereotypical to be real, unfortunately, this is the reality that we live in. Yeah, I wanted I want to live in the reality where these people are just chilling on their boat. You know, and getting old, reading books, sipping those coronas. Come on! Now, Tom was a former probation officer. He had a lot of experience dealing with bad dudes, so he instantly was on high alert when he saw the three men who wanted to purchase his boat. He made attempts to call the meeting off, saying perhaps another day would be better, but Skylar could tell things were going south. Making a quick call, he brought Jennifer and their newborn to meet the Hawks. Jackie, being the sweet motherly lady she was, instantly fell in love with the infant and made quick friends with Jennifer, which eased the tension and relaxed Tom a bit. He agreed to take everyone out for a sea trial, but as soon as they were about to start, Jennifer Jennifer said she had to go, that the baby was fussing, so she headed out. Now, I know what you're probably all thinking, and you're right. Jennifer was in on all of it, and in fact, it was allegedly her idea to attack the Hawks to begin with. She was just as responsible for what happened next as any of them. Yeah, what happens next, just to predict, is they're going to go out on their sea trial, and these dickheads are going to murder them, and then take their boat, and steal all of their stuff, and try to take their identities, but in the most clumsy, idiotic way possible, so they're all going to get caught and go to prison forever which is at least at least that. Come on, let's go to prison with you. Now committed to the sea trial, Tom and Jackie took all three men out onto the open ocean, showing them how the boat runs and how the controls work. As soon as things slowed down, Skylar and John leapt on Tom and subdued him in the Hawks' bedroom, handcuffing him and throwing him on the bed. It said that Tom had to be tased multiple times before he went down. Hearing the commotion, Alonso grabbed and handcuffed Jackie, taking her to the bedroom with the two others, throwing her on the bed with her husband. She was overwhelmed with what was going on, Machane said later to the cops. Tom was calm. She screams at Skylar, We trusted you, and your wife came over. You had your little girl over. Why are you doing this? Skylar then took control of the well deserved and sailed it further into the big, open blue of the ocean. As this whole ordeal was going down, Tom, being the loving husband he was, was able to reposition himself and attempt to comfort his wife by gently stroking her hands. Even in a situation as dire as this, his wife came first a true man.
Upon arriving in a deep part of the ocean, the three men brought their two hostages up top as Skylar brought out some paperwork. Uncuffing Jackie, they forced her to sign and notarize the documents, transferring ownership of the world deserved over to the De Leons. Yeah, that doesn't count. It's under duress. You can't have someone, like, hold a gun to someone's head and be like, SIGN THE CONTRACT! Uh, obviously, that's not valid. It should be noted that Jackie, in a clever bit of deception, signed her name as Jackie Hawk, not Jackie Hawks, in hopes that someone would notice that something was wrong. Good on Jackie. As after everything was done, the crooks noticed and added the S on the end of the signature, which later, to the police, stuck out like a sore thumb and raised their suspicion even higher. Excellent work there. After all the documents were signed, Skylar calmly walked to the front of the well-deserved and retrieved the anchor. In the process of tying the hawks to it, Tom managed to overpower his captors, if only briefly, and kick Skylar directly in the family jewels. It didn't last long, though. John Kennedy instantly leapt onto Tom and knocked him down with a swift blow to the head. McChain described it as a final act of defiance by the powerful captain of the well-deserved. They finished tying the terrified couple to the anchor of the yacht. Skylar then picked it up, walked over to the side of the boat, looked directly into the horror-stricken eyes of Tom and Jackie Hawks, and let it go. As the rattle of the chain rang out around them, Tom and Jackie desperately tried to break their restraints and free themselves from perhaps the most horrible fate that anyone could imagine. But it was all in vain. The chain went taut, and the hawks were dragged down the side of the yacht. Jackie hit her head on the edge with a loud crack, and they tried to slow themselves. They tried to claw themselves away from the edge. They fought for their lives, but it was futile. Tom and Jackie Hawks, loving couple, doting parents, soon-to-be grandparents, were dragged over the edge of their beloved yacht, screaming, Splashing. Water. Darkness. They were fully alive, fully conscious, fully understanding of what was happening. I can't imagine a worse death. The feeling of terror, of helplessness, and having to see a person you loved suffer the exact same fate and emotions. It's something right out of one's worst nightmares. It's been 18 years, and to this day, the bodies of Tom and Jackie Hawk have never been found, and most likely never will. After the Hawks had sank beneath the waves and vanished from sight, Skylar was reported to have cheered and laughed jumping for joy and running to the edge to look over and see if he could see his victims sinking down into the deepest trench of the ocean. That guy's a proper psycho. F this guy. Imagine how depraved and demented you have to be to witness the deaths of a loving couple who did absolutely nothing wrong and then celebrate like you just won the lottery. It's disgusting. Skylar then took control of the boat and drove it back to shore, and we know the rest from there. Skylar de Leon, Jennifer de Leon, John Kennedy, and Alonso Machain were all arrested and charged with the murders of Tom and Jackie Hawks. The real kick in the teeth? Oh, when searching the de Leon residence, police found a video camera. Inside was a home recording by Jackie Hawks. In it, she said how much she would miss the boat, as it was their last day aboard it, but also how excited she was to be a grandma. Only for the video to suddenly cut. Where Jackie's final video once was, now showed Skylar, Jennifer, and their baby at Thanksgiving dinner only days later. These animals in human skin had taken the last remnants of the hawks and had taped over it for their own use. No remorse, no regret. They simply didn't care. A selfish motive. We'll now get to talk about the all-important question of why. If you guessed it was all for money, you'd be absolutely correct. But there's a deeper why to even that. Why would he need the money? The answer was because Skylar de Leon wanted to have gender reassignment surgery. That's right, Skylar is transgender, and this was her key to the body she always wanted. As stated before, her birth name is John, but she changed it to Skylar as that's a very gender neutral name. Now, I normally don't believe in kowtowing to garbage, and Skylar de Leon disgusts me to no end. As a fellow member of the LGBT community, uh, Matt, not me, gay and proud of it, it's actions like this that disgrace our community and give it a bad name to so many people. However, after talking to people, I don't, this guy, <laughs> I just feel these are two separate things. One is he's a psycho. The other is he's transgender. And they just, I, I mean, there are psychos everywhere. Like, there are straight psychos, there are gay psychos, there are transgender psychos. It's just... There are horrific people. That's and there's going to be a percentage of horrific people in in every community. However, after talking to people I hold dear who also represent our community, I've come to accept that pronouns and the like are truly an important thing, a right that everyone has, even if you don't care for the people using them. I don't respect Skylar de Leon, but I respect the community and my friends within it. So I'll be using her proper pronouns from now on, as it's now relevant. Yeah, I agree. I think like. I have no problem disrespecting Skylar de Leon. She is a piece of shit. But if you're not using the pronouns that someone chooses, you're not just disrespecting them, you're disrespecting the idea of that, I suppose. 
In that same vein, Skylar must have been rather desperate for that sex change. While in custody awaiting trials, Leon attempted to do the procedure herself by wrapping a pillowcase around Captain Winky and going to town with a razor that she somehow got a hold of. She was taken to the hospital and stabilized, though honestly, if it were me, I'd have left her there. Does that make me a bad person? I don't think so. In the end, Jennifer, who had divorced Skylar while awaiting trial, was sentenced to two life sentences without the possibility of a parole. Excellent. Alonso Machain was sentenced to 20 years in prison. It would have been longer had he not cooperated with the police. Finally, Skylar Zillian and John Kennedy, surely much to Simon's delight, were sentenced to death. Oh, I didn't realize they had this in California. Wait, was this in Cal? I thought this was taking place in California. They got rid of the death penalty because, um, what's his face? The cult guy, Manson. He wasn't executed because they got rid of the death penalty. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I do think the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think... Uh, look, this is one of those things where it's, this is beyond all reasonable doubt. This person murdered two innocent people by tying them to a f***ing anchor and throwing them in the ocean. Do I think they should be executed? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I'm okay with that. They're all currently in prison with Skylar and John on death row, waiting for their sentences to come to pass. In 2019, Skylar legally had her gender changed to that of a woman and her pronouns changed to match. Being the stain on humanity and the LGBT community that she is, she attempted to have the state pay for her surgeries. Thankfully, they shut that down immediately. Good. Em. Wrap up. And that's where we leave our story today. A story that did not need to happen. One of two loving people who simply wanted to enjoy their lives and live closer to their family, and in doing so, it cost them everything. This tragedy has been covered all over the internet in articles and news reports, as well as on other channels such as Mr. Ballin and that chapter, both of which did a wonderful job and are a credit to the true crime channel family. So I figure they deserve a shout out here. Yeah, both channels that I know good stuff. Skylar de Leon. <laughs> of course, you know these channels. They're like the largest channels that exist in, in your space, Simon. <laughs> you big brain. <laughs> Skylar de Leon, her ex-wife, and their accomplices are the lowest of the low, and they don't deserve the recognition that they've been given. They deserve to rot in the deepest level of hell and to be forgotten to the annals of true crime history. So here, I wish to remember Tom and Jackie. They were amazing people, amazing parents, and would have been amazing grandparents. They lived their lives on their terms. They had fun every step of the way and should be around today to spread their love to everyone that they know. Sadly, they aren't. They had the rest of their futures stolen from them, but we remember them now so that their memory will live on forever. I also wish to send regards to Ryan and Matt Hawks, the two men who, for nothing more than a selfish wish for one's own comfort, lost the two most important people in their lives. After the tragedy, Matt and Ryan inherited the well deserved, though they sold it soon after. And I leave you now, Simon, and our dear audience, with a quote from Tom Hawkes himself, a saying he would tell his boys, and it's a quote that he and Jackie live by to the fullest. Life's too short, and it's my life. This is our time. And I feel, if I hesitate, then it would just go by, and I'll miss it. Rest in peace, Tom and Jackie Hawkes. Together forever, warm and loving, in a paradise well deserved. This was a this was a sad one. I, uh, from this, like, super, like, happy beginning and then just have some people's lives just devastated just is yeah a real just just not fair um this has been an episode of casual criminalist if you enjoyed it jesus no i'm just gonna end it there thanks for watching